For folks who don't know us, uh, our company is called Elastic, and we are the uh, company behind open source products like Logstash, Kibana, Beats, and uh, Elasticsearch. Um, these are all open source. We also have commercial offerings, and we have a cloud offering that hosts all of these uh, products uh, as a SaaS. Now, um, this is a set of things today. So we are almost at 500 Elasticians. That's what we like to call us. We actually did a vote, and uh, Elasticians were one of the most voted uh, things that we want to call ourselves. The others were Elast I don't know. Uh, elastic make elastic faces. Elastic faces. One of them. Yeah, so, yeah well, some, some ridiculous ones. Um, we are spread across 32 countries. Uh, it's uh, actually unbelievable that uh, it, our company has only been there for like four and a half years. Uh, 32 countries is a lot for the size of a company. Uh, we are 250 engineers who build products that have been cumulatively used or downloaded by uh, 50 plus million uh, users and, and downloads. So. Um, and we want to take you through a journey of how you know we started as a small company, as a startup, uh, and then we've scaled and we've learned our mistakes. We've done mistakes. We learned from it, and then we've got uh, you know a tremendous success in some things, and then we're still learning in a few other things. So we want to take you through this journey, and we want to begin uh, at the uh, the founding. So in 2012, four people um, started uh, Elastic. Elastic Church was called back then based on the product Elastic Church, and uh, three of them were technical. Uh, Shai, Uri, and Simon. They've been involved in uh, open source products. Shai wrote the first uh, version of Elastic Church. Uri and Simon have been involved in Lucene for a long time, and Stephen, who became the CEO, has also a deep uh, open source experience because he co-founded uh, Spring Source. So um, this is this is a rich set of uh, open source experience. So now. Um, typically, when you start building a company, the next few hires are going to be engineers, right? In our case, it was a CFO. And this is surprising because, as I said, you want, you want to bring on engineers, you want to ramp them up so you can start building products. But it turns out our founders had a vision of being remote or being distributed from day one. So this was not by accident that being distributed as a company, it was by choice. And we brought in a CFO so that this person could build the financial infrastructure so that we could hire people from all over the world, right? We could you know, uh, deal with things like labor laws in different countries, not a small thing at all. Taxes, not even funny, you know, just in the just in United States, it's complicated. So uh, imagine all over the world. So, so this person got us off to a great start. So immediately we started hiring uh, engineers, uh, committers uh, on, on our open source products, who were from someone from Romania, some people were from Barcelona, and, and you know, uh, different parts of the world. Now, um, this is the textbook definition of a distributed system. We got a bunch of nodes uh, distributed geographically uh, on different machines, horizontally scalable, all those things, and they constantly talk to each other, right? They talk about health, they talk about like if they're still part of the cluster, they're like, you know, how they're doing and so on. And uh, all of this is through different forms of communication. Now, um, Elasticsearch itself, as a software, was, was designed to be distributed from day one. So when Shai built uh, Elasticsearch, it was built on top of Lucene, which is an information retrieval library written in Java. But he wanted to make it distributed from day one. He wanted to make it you know, scalable and being able to uh, uh, you know, uh, put it on different machines and so on. Now, what does a distributed software like Elasticsearch have to do with a distributed open source company like us? It turns out there's lots of similarities. And this is what we're going to explore uh, in this talk. In the next 30 minutes, we're going to draw parallels between a distributed software and how we kind of view that as how we run the company, run the engineering org, and pretty much the entire company, actually. Now, so the most important thing about a distributed system is the nodes have to constantly communicate. They have to constantly, as I said, acknowledge and ping and sell, send the uh, health of the, uh, the nodes itself and so on. And uh, we do that internally as people as well in the company. And uh, communication is a really, really important part. And we use different tools for that, like Gmail, Slack, GitHub, and Zoom, which is a video conferencing uh, software. Now, communications can, uh, you know, it's in two flavors, asynchronous communication and synchronous communication. Asynchronous communication, again, going back to our distributed system, uh, you can't expect nodes to be uh, available all the time. Some of them are down, they come back up, 
and you talk to a service that might take some time to respond. So again, drawing parallels to people, um, we got people all over the world, as we said. And uh, for us, asynchronous communication is really, really important. We achieve this through emails. We send a ton of emails. You'll be surprised. On day one, when you join the company, um, we, we get like 300 emails or something because there's so many emails that get sent, GitHub notifications, and so on. So that's why I call this filters included. So one of the things that we do when someone joins the company is give them a set of filters. So we have like three or four set of filters that nicely label stuff and you know bucket it into different uh, folders and so on. And and over the years we've learned like which ones are the best. Like build emails go to build build uh, folders and so on. So um, we we encourage emails. We encourage sending a lot of emails because it's time zone friendly and it helps us to scale a lot. And it's also important. Uh, in email because uh, we, we talk about things. We talk about design, we talk about how a product evolves, and all of this is through email threads, right? People respond and they either accept it, they say, you know, this, this doesn't make sense and this is why it doesn't make sense and so on. So there's kind of a, there's a posterity to it. There's, there's like, you know, threads of like how we reach the decision. And this is really, really important. Like we can look back, and all of this is, as I said, in our company is all uh, indexed and it open. So you can, like, if you join today, you can go back two years before and find out, like, what was, like, you know, why did we do certain things, right? And it actually starts all the way from the top. So um, I don't know if you can see on the top, there's uh, uh, an email by Shai, who's a CEO now, and uh, he sends usually lengthy emails about, like, why certain things were done. And this is really important because oftentimes as we grow, initially it's great. Everybody knows everything about the company when you're small and then you know, I understand why we're doing certain things. But then uh, imagine if you're like right now we are a 500 person company, but we still do this. Even today, uh, Shai sends out emails saying, you know, hey, we spoke about certain things and, and from a business perspective, from, from even from like technical perspective, and this is why we did certain things. And this is important. And uh, even like products, we send uh, weekly uh, updates. So for example, Beats is a product and they send like weekly emails as a digest. So uh, it, you, know, you can kind of follow it and you can say, you know, hey, this is what happened in the project in the last one week. So it's really easy to get like a digest of information. And we actually publish this openly outside as well so that folks who are following the uh, project, open source people, they can find out like, you know, what's going on uh, in the uh, project and why we did certain things and decisions and so on. Right. And some emails are absolutely hilarious, right? They become history. And uh, for example, this is Boaz, one of our engineers. Um, he, he, you know, his phone was in the pocket and he sent an email with the subject line TGJ. So it was pocket dialed, a pocket email. And, uh, and, and you know, uh, pretty much after that, there's, there's you know, hilarity ensures, right? It's like everybody replies all. And this is one of the things uh, um, where reply all is encouraged. It's fine. It's like you don't have to deal, like you don't have to worry about like, you know, hey, there's, this is like a 500 person company uh, and you know, reply all is gonna spam everybody. It's fine, we're all distributed. It's nice to uh, you know, be involved in this part of the things. And uh, my favorite is the second reply is like, so this looks like someone who's been using Vim for the first time would try to exit it. So <laughs> this should be on a t-shirt, right? And it is. <laughs> so, uh, so emails become t-shirts. So everybody replies all, and then it snowballs into so many funny stuff, GIFs, emojis. There's no end to it. And then you know, eventually, some of them become t-shirts, and you know, we all love the stuff. Um, so moving on to more um, uh, you know, asynchronous communication, uh, we rely on GitHub a lot in our company. Uh, GitHub uh, provides us a place where we have conversations, design conversations, technical conversations. And, and this example, uh, you know, we, we, I'm pointing out the fact that we uh, at mention somebody in the GitHub uh, thread. So um, you know, we could e you could have easily done this in Slack because all the people who've, who've, you know, who are uh, talking here, they all work in the same company. They could go to Slack and they'd be like, you know, have a private conversation, private to our, our company, and it's not visible to the external world. But we try to stick to GitHub for all the design issues so that, as I said, we're an open source company. People follow us. They want to see not just why we, like, no, not just like, you know, this is where we ended up, but how we ended up in a certain place and so on. So um, we've been, we've been uh, um, you know, successful in doing this. Sometimes we, we, you know, we go to Slack and then we try to, 
uh, encourage people to go back and say, hey, it's OK to have a discussion on Slack or Zoom or video or whatever. But then go back and kind of you know, just write down what was the discussion or what was the decision. It's always important. It's good for us, as I said, for posterity to go back and say, oh, this is why we did it Like, you know, maybe two years down the line. Um, and, and GitHub is used by different people, uh, different teams in different ways. We don't actually say, you know, hey, this is, we don't, there's no enforcement of like, this is how every team should use stuff. For example, here, uh, Cloud Team is um, playing with like labels. Uh, we use GitHub labels a lot, because uh, GitHub, we try to make GitHub into a Jira, so that's what it is. So uh, we're using like labels to find out how we can prioritize certain stuff and, you know, how can we uh, label things and be, make it easy to uh, find uh, issues and so on. So the other flavor of the communication, synchronous communication. Um, and this is, again, uh, encouraged, but there are certain etiquettes we like to follow. Uh, Slack is one of our, you know, the most popular day-to-day -day tool that we use uh, for, for synchronous communication. We get answers immediately. Uh, this is like day-to-day, -day, like, you know, hey, how are you, and what's going on, and so on. Uh, but then technical discussions are always encouraged to be in public. And this is good for everybody because new folks are joining in, and they see, like, you know, people talking about public stuff, which becomes public knowledge, and then you can easily follow things. And, you know, we could have done this in a private one-on-one -on -one conversation, but then you lose that, right? So maybe somebody else who's, who's knows more about this topic could have pitched in and talked about it. So, we, like, we try to encourage, uh, you know, technical conversation in public. Uh, first of all, we want to make technical conversation happen in GitHub, but if it fails through, uh, we try to encourage have, having that in public. And then uh, this is really important, as in uh, our company is super transparent and like, you know, Slack and um, uh, all kinds of emails. E everybody's open to uh, like kind of uh, get into these uh, rooms. None of them is kind of private. So um, if, you're, if you're interested in marketing and what they're doing day to day, you can join the marketing channel and see what's going on during a launch or a campaign or something. And sometimes slacks get crazy, right? Uh, the person here, Michael, <laughs> last night, um, he, you know, he's crazy about jiffies. He probably knows more about jiffies than anybody else. And beer. Uh, yeah, beer. So um, uh, there's a craft beer channel, and there's channels for not just technical stuff. So in essence, a lot of our culture or a lot of our day-to-day -day stuff is on Slack. I mean, we are a distributed company, so we don't have like water coolers. You can't just go to like you know a hallway conversation. This is a hallway conversation, right? We we kind of bring that into Slack. Uh, it's kind of weird, or maybe if you're not worked for a distributed company, it's, it kind of gets used to to uh, to to this uh, uh, culture. But then pretty much it's it once you know everybody's friendly enough to make you uh, get into it, and then you you know it's 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 all uh, flows nicely from there. Okay, so uh, more synchronous uh, communication stuff. Uh, tying back to our distributed uh, systems, um, you know, we want to we want to have both types of communication, async and sync. Uh, they have their own uh, advantages and disadvantages. So meetings, as I said, we are a distributed company. We have to have meetings, right? Not everything can be uh, talked on on Slack. Uh, sometimes it's easy to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, it's hard to type like twenty. Uh, uh, you know, person e like twenty, like you know, twenty line email, but then it's easy to get onto like uh, video zoom and then talk about stuff. So when we started, we did uh, dev standups. This was like a twenty five engineers, right? We used to have standups every day and talk about what we did and like what's kind of blocking things and so on. But then that f like kind of failed uh, at twenty five. We were like, it kind of broke down. So we, there were too many people on the call and not a lot of things were getting done. And if some people were not interested in others' uh, work and so on. And then we moved to something called Demo Day. Uh, so this is where a meeting uh, happens uh, every other week. Uh, people show stuff. So developers can show like uh, new features and maybe even new products. Uh, and we even talk about like process stuff, like how things are working. It's more like, sh like presentation, like uh, communication and so on, uh, which is great. This is still working even today. We do demo days every other week, and uh, it, it, this, is, this has been really, really successful. But um, since we didn't have stand-ups, uh, we kind of lost the fact that we, like, there was there's no group level talk happening. Uh, and then uh, as the company was growing, people kind of realized that you know, they didn't know a lot of other people. So uh, we started this thing called table groups. So this is, think of it like a, you go to a restaurant, you'll have like, 
you know, uh, each, each table is discussing each different things. So it's based on your interest, you can go join a certain table, right? Uh, similarly, you can join table group meetings. Uh, maybe you're talking about Elasticsearch and, and combination of like Elasticsearch and Kibana. And, and again, this is all encouraged to do cross-product uh, conversations as well. And it's not just technical conversation. You know the person. It's like 30-minute conversation, and then you're talking about uh, how your day went, and you know, someone's in Germany, someone's in, Europe, in, you know, in uh, Canada, and so on. But that failed. At some point, uh, again, table groups, people lost interest, and, and not a lot of uh, communication was happening. Uh, so we, uh, we kind of abolished that. And then um, we went to what's called the black belt session. Uh, this is like expert-led sessions where you talk about, for example, uh, how garbage collection works in Elasticsearch and like how shard allocation works in a distributed system. So it's more like, uh, you know, uh, like someone who's knowledgeable in certain areas trying to uh, you know, disperse knowledge about it and so on. Um, and then as we've grown, uh, we've started cross-product teams and, and project teams. So it's almost like self-evolving uh, entity. So uh, at some point, we realized that projects are formed by people. If they're interested in certain things, they just form a, a project group. And then they have like weekly stand-ups or syncs to kind of give updates of what's going on and discuss issues and so on. So this is happening even today. So this is kind of how our meetings have evolved from like stand-ups to uh, uh, self-forming uh, groups. The other important thing for us is all these meetings are open. It's absolutely anybody uh, can pop in at any time. And uh, we put all of these in uh, a separate calendar called Dev Calendar. Um, and this is all using Gmail. So uh, like I start my week by looking at a dev cal and saying, you know, hey, this looks interesting, so I'm going to go to this. So I copy this to my calendar. Uh, and this is great. This has been working really well for us. Uh, as I said, everything's open, uh, so you can pop in, pop out anytime. Uh, it can be a fly in the wall, listen to things, and so on. And, uh, you know, going on uh, the uh, Slack note, there's also um, uh, uh, what we call as always on. So this is uh, using Zoom, which is the video conferencing tool. Um, always on, or AON as we call it, uh, is a persistent Zoom uh, session. So it's always on. It's, it's there. So anybody could just click on the link on top of every Slack room has, uh, has this link. Uh, and every team has its own AON. Um, so you, you, you join in, and there are people sometimes, they're not even talking. They just you know, have their headphones on. They're like, you know, uh, writing code. But it's good to get that face-to-face, -face, uh, uh, you know, just that experience. So you might not talk at all. You might just, you know, say a few words and just, you know, be there, hang out. So it's like a cafe, right? It's like a virtual cafe. But sometimes you also do design conversations. So, if, for example, in the second, uh, uh, you know, section there, um, Aaron just says, you know, hey, uh, I want to talk about something. Can you jump on uh, AON? So this is Encrate. So uh, as we know that certain things cannot be done on Slack, on email, on GitHub. So we ask people to kind of jump in, jump out, and so on. So. And um, release parties, right? We, we release a lot of uh, software in, in different times of the year. Uh, so it's not possible for us to um, uh, get together and celebrate it. So we have virtual celebrations. Um, so we have Zoom parties. Uh, I, I know this, the, in this particular release, uh, it was 10 AM for me, and I started drinking. So that happens. <laughs> um, and uh, it's not just virtual. So uh, we understand that it's not always possible to have uh, virtual conversations. Uh, certain things are best discussed face to face. We completely understand it. It's encouraged uh, to travel. Um, you can travel if you have, for example, uh, if you have a sticky thing, or if you want to design whiteboard certain things, you're not getting anywhere in the uh, async conversation. You can ask your manager, or you can be like, you know, hey, I need to go hash out this thing with uh, two other uh, folks, and you can you can travel there. Um, and then we also meet twice a year. So as an entire team, uh, we we call this Inge All Hands. Uh, we pick a place, uh, sometimes it's Europe, sometimes it's uh, US, uh, and then we go there, uh, we, we again talk about a lot of different things, and it varies. Uh, the, the, the most important thing I like about it is the fact that you have uh, you know, people like our CEO coming in, and even uh, investors sometimes they come in and they give us the big picture. They talk about why they invested and what do they see in the company, and, and you know, it's more um, a, you know, high level view of uh, where this is going and so on. 
And uh, as teams, we, we have like uh, one day where we all do cross product. We all talk about like how our team is affecting the other team, is there dependencies, how we help each other and so on. We also talk about what works in our team, maybe we can uh, uh, learn from the other teams and so on. But we also do uh, intra, like inter-team stuff too. So we go on to a retrospective, like, you know, hey, this is not working. And, and we also talk about like uh, whiteboarding and you know, design discussions and things that are not usually uh, possible during uh, a Zoom session and so on. Right, and uh, we usually pick uh, places which are um, uh, which are nicer. Uh, for example, I mean, if this is Tahoe. Uh, it's got a great view. Um, and uh, last time we went to Prague, uh, we went to Barcelona. So it's it's always fun to kind of mix in meetings with with like fun activities. Uh, it's not just technical conversations. It's also the uh, you know social uh, aspect of it. Uh, it's really important because we don't see each other a lot like face to face. And and when this happens. Uh, it's much more, uh, you know, it's much more valued. So we go out skiing, we go hang out, and so on. So it's a lot of fun. All right. So um, how are we doing on time? You're fine. Cool. Um, so how we actually do work? How we actually write software and ship software? Um, we don't do agile. We don't do waterfall. Um, it doesn't fit our uh, team or, or culture. So what we do is consensus-based. So as I said, we are an open source company. We operate like an open source company inside the uh, company. So, um, so consensus-based. So everybody has an opinion. Everybody has. Everybody can opine, and and you can like you know uh, uh, talk about things. It can slow down things, but on the long run, it makes a lot of sense because. Uh, everybody's got a, you know, a, a, you know, their input into it, and so on. Um, and uh, this has been working really, really well for us. So uh, people plus one ideas, they, they upvote it. Sometimes they downvote it, and, and you're, they're asked to explain why you downvote it, and so on. And uh, uh, again, we use GitHub for a lot of things. Uh, in this case, um, we use it for like meta issues, like how uh, we plan our releases, checklists, and, and you know, it's it's. GitHub provides a lot of, uh, it's simple, uh, but also provides good flexibility in uh, how we can organize things. Every, every code that gets into our product is uh, peer reviewed. Uh, not just code, uh, blog posts, and you know, if you have design issues, you can get it reviewed. Uh, you have to get it reviewed by uh, folks. And um, this is good because uh, we want to make sure that at least one person other than you is kind of you know, looking at it and saying, you know, this makes sense. And, uh, can kind of uh, you can kind of bounce ideas of it. So there's always one person for you to kind of go there and say, you know, hey, uh, this is something that I just worked on. Can you take a look at it? Uh, we use GitHub uh, pull requests uh, because our all our projects are in uh, uh, GitHub. Uh, actually, even uh, marketing teams they use GitHub. They, they for blogs uh, we have issues in GitHub, and then you know for campaigns like how this is going, and then people comment on that, and it's it's working wonderfully for us. And um, LGTM is probably the most used acronym uh, in our company, or probably elsewhere as well. Uh, LGTM stands for "looks good to me." Uh, it's in our way of acknowledging something works or something like good to go. Uh, most pull requests end with LGTM, meaning that you can start merging your stuff in. Uh, in case of a blog, people look at it and they say, "You know, hey, this is great, so ship it." Right? Um, again, it, you know, LGTM is used in all kinds of contexts, and, and you know, as a as a pat on the back or like saying, you know, this works. All right, so how we do releases. Um, we have a lot of products. Uh, and uh, before um, we introduce a new system, but before that, uh, every product used to uh, release on their own. So for example, Kibana used to pick a day and they'd be like, you know, hey, I'm releasing, write a blog and done, right? Uh, it was kind of confusing. Every product had its own versioning system. And they used to just release at any time. It was confusing internally. It was confusing externally as users. They would be like, oh, so Kibana is 4.3, Lockstash is 1.2, Elasticsearch is 2.3. So what's going on, right? Imagine the support matrix or the matrix you have to like, do to kind of follow if Elasticsearch 1.2 works with Kibana 2.3 or whatever, right? So it's really hard. It was like herding cats. It was, it was not uh, scaling at all. So what we did is introduce this thing called time-based releases. So uh, in time-based releases, um, we the way we release things is kind of like SEMVR, uh, X, Y, Z. X stands for uh, a major version uh, bump. Y is a minor version, and Z is a patch level version. 
So a major version is when we can introduce breaking changes. We don't always try to do it. So if you want to break things, if you want to clean things, um, the uh, convention is that you have to do that in a major version. So when folks are upgrading, they know that we put out a list of breaking changes and we, we, tell, how, we tell people how to upgrade stuff. Uh, in miners, you can do uh, features. You can ship a lot of features on miners, but you can't break stuff. So you can't, you, you, like people should be able to upgrade easily from uh, one miner to another. And, and Z is patch releases. It's like bugs and, and, and you can release any time. So, uh, we usually pick like for every six months we want to do a major. So this is our time period. So like every six to eight weeks we want to do a minor uh, feature releases. So we put that on a calendar. Uh, we agreed six to eight weeks. We 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 spread it out for the next uh, a year uh, for this particular series of releases. And then I, I like to think of it as as this is as a train analogy. So what it is is for example um, you only you're working on features. But you only merge it when you feel that this is good to go, when it's scalable, it's well tested or not. If it's not, then you catch the next train because there's one coming in six weeks. So it's, it's fine to wait. Uh, the most important thing is the last point here, which is like our developers know that if you slip it, uh, if you slip a release, it's completely fine. It's not, it's not a mistake or it's not something that people are going to blame you. So there is this, this culture that this is really important. Well, for this to work, we want to make sure that engineers can take a, a vote or they can be like, you know, hey, it's like I'm not feeling good about this, this particular feature. It's not well tested. Uh, I'm going to sit this one out. So you just don't merge it. You just keep it as a feature branch. And then when you're feeling confident, you merge it in and then it goes off into the next uh, release. That's why this is like a train-based uh, release where you know, the train keeps coming every six weeks. You either catch it or you catch the next one. All right, so uh, that was my section. And with that, I'll take it away. Uh, we're a little behind on time, so I'm going to burn through these slides. So this is our uh, SVP of all engineering, um, Kevin uh, Kluge. And Klug, sorry. He is an amazing individual. This guy at, at one time had probably 60 or 70 engineers direct reporting to him. Um, how he does it, uh, none of us are really sure. Um, but of course, we love to give him a hard time. Um, OK, so you know, going with the distributed system thing, right? Uh, we have different types of nodes. These nodes have different roles and, and do different things within uh, the company, right? We have Master nodes being things like team leads and tech leads, and then we have data nodes, right? Um, the the engineers building uh, the software, client nodes. Maybe maybe that could be uh, people that people from product that are looking to that, that they want some feature to get in, right? Or um, or it could be build, people building APIs against these things as well, right? So we try to keep everyone informed, and again, we view it very much like a distributed uh, distributed system, right? So Flatorg. I mean, like I said, Kevin had a lot of people reporting to him. We have since gotten one layer of indirection between him and most of the engineers. Uh, you know, each team gets to decide when they want to uh, further break down or further further build their hierarchy, right? So, for example, Suyog's team uh, is is one flat team, and they and Su, you know everyone reports to Suyog, who then reports to Kevin. Whereas on the cloud team. We have subteams. We've gotten enough people to where we found that subteams are valuable for us. Uh, Kibana and Elasticsearch are doing the same thing. So as the team grows, you know, you have to understand that there's not one process that works for every team across the board. And so that's what we we enable our teams to make that decision themselves rather than some you know dic dictated thing from on high that says that every team must have X amount of people or do you know some some specific thing or write down um, you know, TPS reports or something along those lines. And again, highly available, right? We have people distributed across the world. Um, the cloud team has s someone in all three major regions of the world, so we follow the sun for things like um, on-call and things like that. Uh, and we have multiple people in all those regions. Um, and you know, we want to be able to, if someone's out, um, have a backup uh, for, for any purpose, right? So again, organizing a team, distributing the team, and, and, and making, making sure we've got people in every region uh, is, or in every major time zone area is, is really big for us. Um, and you can see uh, this is a Kibana dashboard of the last five years of all of our engineers. Um, 
I'm pretty sure there's a pointer on this, but I'm not going to bra risk breaking it. So, you know, we've got a large group that's in, um, you can see in Western Europe and uh, spread out across the United States. Um, but, you know, if you zoom in really close, you can see people in Argentina and Brazil, um, all over. And, I mean, we've got people in India and uh, APAC. Um, and, and strangely enough, there's actually someone um, in the middle of nowhere outside of Brazil. So they were probably shipwrecked. Um, Okay, so like I said, we're globally distributed, right? Like think of, a, think of a distributed system, right? You want to spread your information, you want to spread the load across the infrastructure across the world. So we hire for anywhere, we hire 100% remote, um, and we look for the best talent, right? If you need someone who is an amazing Lucene developer, you're not going to tell them to move in order to do that, right? Um, just if, the same if you were going to have a kernel developer for some uh, for some company, right? You're not going to tell people to move. Let them stay where they are. They're happy where they are. Um, and, and let them do what they want to do. Um, <clears throat> so we view our, uh, our employees as nodes, right? A node can have many roles. Sometimes I play the role of um, a, a tech lead or a team lead in advising other people on the team in a sub-team. And then there, you know, Sue Yog, the buck can stop to him if he thinks I'm crazy. Uh, or something along those lines, right? So, so we all play different roles, and those roles are, um, you know, uh oh, we lost one. So we're evangelists, right? We're talking. We're we're at conferences. Um, you know, you, you'll see you'll see us all around. Uh, we do tech talks, and in, in all the major cities that we uh, that we live in, we try to do tech talks as well. Um, we try to do uh, meeting groups. We've got some amazing DevRel people as well. So come down and see us if you're interested in getting a meetup started or anything like that. But again, your engineers. You should be hiring people that are evangelists, that love your products, that want to talk about your products, like us, right? You want to write blogs. You know, we have, um, we have a certain number of blogs that we try to reach every month, and we actually exceed that every single month. Last month, we were like two and a half times the, the, the blogs that we want to have for a given month. And we're not going to hold those blogs back, right? We're not going to wait and push them through a pipeline. Our engineers and the people that you will be hiring to do these same things are evangelists. They, they do these things. They, we love to do these things, right? I want people to know about the cool stuff that I'm working on, so I'm going to write a blog about it. Uh, we also do support, right? So we have an amazing support team as well. But there's times where your, the people that wrote the code are going to know how, what's happening in a certain situation best, right? So we enable the support team to get us the information we need so that we can then help them. We, uh, Last week we had an issue in cloud, and um, myself and um, some, some people from support and some of the uh, Elasticsearch core engineers were on some infrastructure looking to see why we were losing some packets. Um, and I mean, it's really cool, you know, you get to know different people in the company as well. But, you know, you, you stress that you want to hire someone that is, is a senior engineer because they know how to do this, they evangelize, they want to do all these things, right? So also documentation. We have a doc writing team, but our engineers know the documentation. They, know, they, they wrote it, so we encourage our engineers to also uh, write the documentation as well. Um, and this is the biggest thing, have autonomy, right? So, you know, I may not want to write a blog this month. I know that the, the rest of the people on the team, they've got my back, so to speak, right? Someone is going to write a blog, um, and I'm I might step up next month. I might have a few extra cycles to do that or to, to do some support, right? We spread the load. We choose what we want to work on. Uh, just like Suyog said, with, with the open communication, we can define um, what we want to do. We can tell people what we're working on, and we can... Okay, I'm, I'm speeding up. Let's just go on. Okay, so one of the last things we're going to talk about is node discovery, right? How do you hire these people? Um, it's not exactly easy, right? I'm sure that half the people in this audience are thinking to themselves, well, you know, we want to hire great talent. It's really hard to hire great talent, right? Um, and we do. We have, we have a bunch of people distributed around the world that are, looked, that are, that are building uh, teams to help bring in more talent. Uh, we have a lot of referrals. You know, your referrals are your best friend. Uh, you know these people. They are good at what they do. So, I mean, you can see this is another Kibana dashboard. By the way, if you haven't caught on, we use a lot of internal tools to dog food for things like GitHub and things like new hires. Just every piece of information that can be built, it, all this information can be stored in Elasticsearch. You can just plug it into uh, Kibana and visualize it. So this is a pretty cool graph. You can see how many people per month are hired. You know, in April, we hired 28 people. So, um, you know, uh, so you go into an interview and you end up with 
weird questions like how many golf balls fit into an airplane, right? You start to ask questions along the lines of, okay, well, how big is this airplane? You know, how many seats are there? Let's approximate the size of a golf ball by like some, you know, geographical thing that I can measure, maybe a square or something like that, you know, build it up, account for the, the sides of the plane that are curved and things like that, right? No. Um, you know, some companies do that, that's great and all, but, you know, we're not building golf balls to fit in an airplane, <laughs> we're building distributed software. Um, so again, no puzzle questions. Each team has different interview styles. We do uh, code exams. Each team has their own code exams. Uh, so you get to define um, you know, what, what problems you give out to people. You try to st stick to the exact same problem set so you can know, uh, you know you can, the, the same inputs should, re you know, should result in the same outputs uh, for a pure function. So we try to do that across, across our teams at least. And again, so the technical and team fit for the distributed environment. Um, we hire the people that we need to hire based on the role, right? Uh, sometimes we hire great engineers and put them in places that they're interested in, but you know, we know our, our recruiting team knows what sub things we're looking for. Like we, you know, we're looking for a network engineer, we're looking for someone who knows uh, you know, consensus really well, things like that, right? So they'll look for specific things. Um, you know, so we're independent, right? I, I work from my house. I work on what's best for the business, but at the same time, I work on something that's fun as well. So we have this autonomy. We have this independence to do this. And this is something that goes a really long way. Um, you know, you still have to do things like the open communication and things like that are really important in order to facilitate this independence, right? Because you don't know what your engineers are working on. They're all working remotely. You're not having daily stand-ups every day. You know, you're checking GitHub, making sure people are making progress, things like that. Uh, we don't want to stifle our engineers with really, really heavy process because, I mean, no one really likes all that process, right? Um, like, literally, no one, except for maybe people who like process. Um, so average experience, sorry y'all, I'm really trying to burn through these slides so we can all go get a beer. Um, so you can see our average experience is really heavy around the like 10 year mark, right? We hire a lot of senior engineers. You know, when you're looking for people for, the, for your distributed company, you wanna hire people who have done this before. You know, you have to hire self-motivated individuals, people that want to have autonomy, that wanna do all of these things. So it's not exactly easy. And it is totally a full-time job for probably, at this point, a team of 10 people on our, uh, in our recruiting department. So, man, this thing keeps dying. All right, so, all right, we'll be fast. So, mentoring. This is something, no matter how senior you are, everyone has a mentor at Elastic. Um, this is very encouraged for all distributed companies. You know, you want to have high touch uh, in the first few weeks and first few months because you know, these systems are, you know, that we have big systems, they're um, a lot of code, you have to understand things, so it's nice to have someone to bounce ideas off of, to talk to, to find out where to go for some, like, HR document on travel and, uh, and things along those lines. They're not your manager, it's another engineer. So, uh, our managers, in the cases that we actually have managers, our managers aren't responsible for doing this. They're responsible for defining what engineer on the team is going to be your mentor. Um, and this works out great for us. It, it has for a very long time, and we're still doing it today. Um, and we, we onboarded on cloud alone, we onboarded, what, 10, 10 SREs in the last uh, two or three months, as well as probably seven or eight devs in the last six months. So, you know, it's not broken, right? Um, so this is another thing we do, is everyone goes to one of the motherships. Uh, you know, we have two large, uh, we have one in Amsterdam and one in the Bay, and you have to get people in, uh, in a room together to talk, to meet each other, right? Because there's a lot of, you know, you, you're, we're all humans, right? We need to talk together, we need to be each other's friends, we need to, um, you know, have fun together as well as we need to work hard together. So we all meet, um, you know, the team leads fly out and they meet with their team as well. So, I mean, we, and, and these people are flying from all over the world to, uh, to X school. And, um, I mean, it's really interesting. You get to know how the phone systems work and how to file system, uh, tickets and all this. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, highly, it's highly focused on uh, what we're doing, which is um, engineering. So, all right, with that, we've got some takeaways. Um, other than, and we, we are not giving away that really sweet My Little Pony backpack. Um, although maybe we should next year, because that thing is awesome. All right, so don't manage by outliers, right? Like, we understand that people are going to make mistakes. 
we don't build policy around people making mistakes. We build policy and we build frameworks such that if a mistake is made, it is able to be cleaned up quickly, right? Auto scaling groups on nodes and things like that, like if your infrastructure goes down. Um, but at the same time, it's also for people. We give everyone the keys to the castle. I can log into Twitter as Elastic right now and um, you know, put a bunch of poop emoji if I want. But I'm not going to do that. I am, well, I mean, maybe. Um, <laughs> Maybe after a couple of beers. But again, you know, you, you're going to occasionally have the random person that accidentally deletes the Elasticsearch uh, GitHub repository and someone has to call GitHub and, uh, and clean that up and then your caches are all messed up in GitHub for like the next eight hours and everybody's confused. But again, we're not managing by that, right? We're going to build systems in place so that, they, that, that we try to prevent it, but we're not, we're not overly process driven for things like that. And progress over perfection, right? You saw that some of the things we've done failed. Like as you go from 10 to 50 to 100 to 200 people, those things are gonna fail, right? You need to fail fast though, and you need to understand as a company that when you fail, it's okay, right? Trash it, move on. Uh, you know, we've had a few different things that failed. Well, no, we've had a definitely uh, more than a few things that have failed, but we're still here, right? We're growing, we're understanding it. Um, so in closing, right? Everyone says, you know, the way you work today is not going to happen as you scale. Um, and that's true. So g going back to the fail fast, right, you need to understand how you work today and, and know that that might not work tomorrow. And if people have ideas, listen to them. Don't just, you know, oh, this person came from this other company. They've got some silly idea, you know. They're going to come here and try to dictate, you know, how their old company worked. Well, maybe they actually had a good thing to do. So, so we give everyone the ability to communicate together to, to be able to, make our process better. Um, and you know, we're, going, we're going strong right now. We have over 250 developers, which is insane. It does not feel like that either. Uh, you, know, you talk to your team of like 30 or 40 people, or 10 people, or 15 people, or something like that, get together and have fun every uh, six months as well. But you know, we're all here for a common goal. Everyone's here for a common goal, right? To build software that is awesome, that probably will make your company money, but that is awesome and to work with people that are also awesome. And so if you can, if you can find those tenants, open communication, uh, building a distributed team, working with uh, other engineers that also share the same goals as you, autonomy, those kind of things are the things that will let you scale from 25 people to 500 people um, and, and have an awesome distributed company at the end of it. So thank you very much. Everybody, go downstairs, have a beer or um, a tea or whatever you're interested in, and we will be at our uh, booth uh, over by the Red Hat Mobile. Um, so if, uh, if you want to come and ask us questions about this crazy thing, then um, come on down. Okay. Thanks, everybody.